Really? Is that what you think about us? Is that what you think about blacks? Is that what you think about Christians? We live in a world where people want to tell us what their pronouns are as though they are not obvious and evident. I am Kamala Harris. My pronouns are she and her. I am a woman. And my pronouns right. are she, her, and hers. She, her, and her. For some people, maybe it's not. And I know we live in a world where we even have a Supreme Court justice who doesn't know or at least want to tell us what the definition of a woman is. Uh, can you provide a definition for the word woman? Can I provide a definition? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. I can't. And the natural response, like some people have had for her, is if you want to know what a woman is, ask your mama because your mother should know. But unfortunately, more and more people are leaning on the side where we just have turned the world upside down. And so I have a legitimate, honest question. Christians, is it OK? Should we vote Democrat? Now, I understand that there are people that have a fervor and a desire and energy for this side or for that side. Now, let me just say this up front. It's OK to have a political dog in the fight. That part is OK. What's not OK is that your desire, your energy for any one of these parties is more important or is greater than your energy for Christ. You cannot be a Christian if something else takes the place of Christ. Let me just say that up front. Now, could Christians, is it possible for Christians to differ to disagree on political issues? Sure. It is. Now, there's some things you would think that Christians just simply would not disagree on. And that is that I'm speaking of Christians who actually read the Bible and hold the word of God sacred. So I've got some questions. I've got some questions that, that are brought up uh, because of this recent rally by Kamala Harris. Now, when you do certain things, it just causes me to wonder. And I was bothered. I was upset by some of the things that I saw. This guy, uh, Quavo, I'm not sure. I guess he's a rapper. I don't know much about him, but I heard that he was... Uh, some of the things that he was that he's still promoting uh, is gun violence and so forth, which I'm thinking I thought that part was against those things. But I guess it's just gun violence if it's a certain demographic who is OK with shooting themselves. I'm just asking questions. But what did bother me is you've got a woman who is up there with her midriff showing, um, talking about her body and body parts and things like that and twerking. Is that what you think about black women? Is that what you think about women? Is that the kind of image that you want to portray? Is that, and it seems to be the case. And so I'm wondering now for me, I have a huge problem. It seems like the democratic party has disrespected a lot of things that I don't want disrespected. Now I could be wrong. And so I'm asking, and this is a genuine honest question because at some point in time in the future, in the near future, I want to have a discussion with those on both sides who call themselves believers as to how we should be thinking kind of a kind of a, a Christian or biblical guide to our political views or biblical guide to voting. And for me, there are some things that it seems like one particular party has just thoroughly disrespected. Now, am I saying that either one of these parties are Christian? No. Let me say it again, because people tend not to listen. The Republicans, that is not a Christian party. The Democratic Party, it's not a Christian party. Now, interestingly enough, both parties were formed for this for uh, the same issue. One was formed to get rid of slavery. One was formed to keep slavery. More about that in a little bit. But right now, it seems as though to me, I could be wrong, that there that the Democratic Party is disrespectful to Christianity. How so? Well, for some reason, we are told that abortion and LGBTQ issues are not good enough issues or good enough reasons for us to vote against uh, someone. But gender and skin color seems to be a good enough reason. I think the Democratic Party has done a very good job of disrespecting Christianity. I think they do a wonderful job of maintaining respect for Muslims, for Hindus, for anyone else. Well, I take that back. They don't do a good enough job for uh, protecting uh, or not disrespecting Jews. Jews and Christians seem to be uh, OK, seem to be targets for uh, for other people and the Democratic Democratic Party seems not to want to come out and defend. Now, do I think that Donald Trump is a Christian above all Christians? No, I've got my issues with him. I don't think he's a Christian. I think Donald Trump 
um, his patronizing and pandering, going to black churches and and the Trump Bible. I know it's a Constitution Bible. Uh, and then him not even knowing his favorite verse or saying things like two Corinthians. But what it, what I do see from him is that he's at least reaching out and wanting to promote the things that he believes Christians want. That's what a political um, party or a candidate should do. Want to go to Washington or their state capitals and represent the people back at home to vote or to lean towards where they lean. Not we don't we're not we shouldn't be interested in your views. We should you should be interested in our views, not just get lip service. But so I'm, I'm wondering because it seems like the Democratic Party has disrespected Christians and Christianity. It seems like the Democratic Party has disrespected Black people. For example, uh, it seems like the Democratic Party has done more. Uh, to black people more than what slavery could not do, which is to make us disrespect ourselves. Megan the Stallion, really? Uh, this is what we've come to. We have be we've made ourselves a laughing stock. You couldn't find some. You couldn't find somebody else to put up there, hunt. You put a black woman up there to shake her behind because apparently that's what you think about us. That's what others think about us, and apparently that's what a lot of blacks think. That is okay. The party literally was formed to keep blacks enslaved. Now, granted, that was almost, that was over 150 years ago, 170 years ago. I get that, but we seem to still want to keep black folks kind of enslaved mentally to think that we need, that we need someone else, a particular party to get us out of whatever dulgens we are. Our, our issues seem to only be those that are negative, drug use, uh, prison reform, poverty, things like that. Well, no, there's more to us than just those things. And so I would love to see a party, Republican or Democrat, that didn't leave us or relegate us to the laughing stock of the of the globe. And I do mean the laughing stock of the globe. Uh, they don't mind when black neighborhoods are burned. Uh, but if protesters get too close to the Capitol and their offices, well, then it's a problem. We got a problem if there's fighting uh, and looting and rioting and burning close to our offices, but if they do it in a black neighborhood, that's no problem. They're just expressing their their right to uh, to speak out. They seem to have also disrespected women. There is no definition of a woman. Any man can be one. Uh, and even when they do have a view of a woman, of a biological woman, that particular biological woman seems to be sexualized. There is no respect for the flag, meaning our country. Have you all noticed just lately the different pro-Venezuelan celebrations in this country. Again, we've got people that have disrespected this country by and disrespected our flag by uh, desecrating our flag, burning it, bringing down the American flag just so they can put up a Palestinian flag. Being put out or some sort of sound bobs and they're putting up, they're raising the Palestinian flag at that flagpole and you are hearing what appear to be stun grenades. So tell me in an honest fashion, I really want to know this. Now you're hearing what, I, what I'm feeling. Uh, and I'm bothered. I'm bothered by the way the country's going. It used to be that we disagreed on certain political ideologies and we were OK with that. We didn't want to hurt each other, kill each other, things like that. But we all still had a similar view of the country and where we wanted to go. It was just how we would get there. That would be different. Now it's a totally different view of this country. So please tell me, give me an honest and genuine reason why Christians, particularly black Christians, but really Christians or anyone, should vote for the Democratic Party. I want to know that there are those that believe that Christians cannot vote Democrat. If you vote Democrat, then you're not a Christian. I'm not going that far, but give me a reason why. Is it because of their particular policies? Maybe the immigration policies. Now, we do have a flood of immigrants uh, that have come in quickly and doing so, you know, that literally devalues the dollar. That increases inflation. When you add more people to the workforce, legal or, Im or illegal, the cost of goods and services will increase i.e. inflation. Uh, tell me a reason why we should vote for a particular party. Their economic policies. Now, think, now keep this in mind, though. The Inflation Reduction Act seems to be a failure thus far. Should we vote for them based on their solutions for crime? Go to a city, go to a state that is run by that particular party. They don't seem to be doing all that well on crime or schools. Should we vote for them for schools? I don't know. I would like to actually get your reasons why. Or if you want to just give me the reasons why you should not vote for uh, the Republicans, that's fine. But I want a reason why I should, why anyone should vote for, not against, because there's always a reason character wise where you can vote against someone. I think both of these people that are running for office, Trump and Harris, have serious character issues. But such as it is with our country, uh, we don't have a 
a large amount of people that have good character, that have seemingly good morals, as well as good leadership skills, or at least those that are being put to the front. We don't have a lot to choose from. And so this is what we have. So tell me why someone ought to vote for, in this case, Harris, if they are a Christian. And I know there's going to be a lot of pushback, but I'm just wondering, can a person, is a person allowed to wonder, to ask questions, to differ, to ask questions, and then not get insulted? Somebody's going to want to insult. Somebody's going to want to hurl names and so forth, especially if you're a black person and you ask these questions. Now, listen, let me just say this before we go there. I'll take my black life uh, and my black record, what I've gone through as a black person uh, against anyone. And then you want to call me a sellout, this or that or whatever. Fine. You would do so ignorantly. I'm asking uh, intellectually. I'm asking in an intellectual fashion, in an honest fashion. Can you give reasons for voting for a particular candidate? Not because it's a woman or or because of their skin color or any of these reasons, I want to know a positive reason why a Christian should vote. I want to use these as we come closer to this time that we're going to have this discussion, uh, kind of give a biblical reason, a biblical blueprint, a biblical lens, a biblical mindset for Christians as they go out and vote, as they exercise their political rights. And so that's the reason why. If I'm wrong, fine. Tell me I'm wrong. But do so in a respectful fashion. Tell me, Corey, you're not seeing the big picture, and that'll be fine. I want to use these things to make a bigger discussion. So if you could, please do that. I look forward to seeing what you have to say. I look forward to seeing what the comments have to say. And remember, regardless of what side of the aisle you're on the ledger, uh, if you are Republican, Democrat, if you're conservative, if you're liberal, I am interested in you behaving in a godly fashion. But there are some things that I want us to consider. We do seem to have a country that seems to want to call good evil and evil good. Remember, um, I don't want to do that. The Bible says, woe to those that do so. I do not want to give approval to sin. Paul tells us in, in Romans uh, 1 32 that those who uh, they know the ordinances of God, but those who practice such things are worthy of death. They not only do the same, but also give hearty approval of those who practice such things. And so I do not want to be in the camp or in leagues with someone who is not only doing or involved in sin, but even more to the point, promoting it. And so this is my, my challenge, my offer to anyone. Uh, I look forward to hearing what you have to say. And in the meantime, God bless you.